Hello everyone, thank you for watching this presentation. My name is Jia Bin Liu and I'm from Harbin Institute of Technology. In this video, I will show some work I have finished recently. The topic of this presentation is nonlinear measure for real-time wave force reconstruction on cylinder by using measured wave elevations. The contents are listed as following. The first section is the background and uh, uh, nonlinear reconstruction measure, experimental validation and the results, and the last section is the conclusions. Let's begin with the first section, the background. Uh, the basic idea comes from this video. When I was watching this video, I was thinking how to reconstruct the wave force on this platform based on the information from this video. The information that can be obtained from this video includes the fundament of the structure consists of four large scale cylinders and the type history of the wave elevation around the cylinder, which we can uh, obtain the information of the wave elevation from the visual technology. We also notice that the structure is uh, movable. And then the way load reconstruction can benefit the data collection of way load, structure vibration active control, and uh, structure healthy monitoring. Here shows some previous study on this topic. In the previous study, Morrison equation is frequently utilized for the wave force reconstruction on the small scale structure with the monitor wave elevation around the structures. The defects of this method is Morrison equation is an empirical equation. The result of it relies on the selection of dry coefficient and the initial coefficient, and also the wave field is is assumed to be undisturbed. For the large scale structures, the difficult for to reconstruct the wave load on, the, on this structure is that the incident we are unknown. In the previous in the previous study, we have built a linear wave force reconstruction measure for a circular cylinder with a measured wave elevation around the cylinders. Here shows the algorithm of a wave force reconstruction measure. And the defect of this measure is the linear wave force reconstruction measure will overestimate the low frequency wave actions and the under estimate the high frequency reactions. The reference of the, this study are listed here. To improve the reconstructed results, the nonlinear method is introduced in this study. Section 2, nonlinear reconstruction method. This figure shows the schematic of the wave structure interaction problem. The cylinder is a large scale cylinder and the bottom mounted at the horizontal tangent plane of the seabed. The wave field is unknown and uh, only the wave elevation around the cylinder is monitored. The expression of the uh, monitored wave elevation can be expressed as this function, the, uh, this uh, exp uh, equations, uh, the assumptions used here including potential theory and the linear dispersion relation. Then the wave force can be reconstructed by using these equations. The function used in these equations including include these functions. And uh, in the right circle the function are the QTFs and these two functions are named as transfer functions. They can modify the amplitude of the first order and the second order wave elevations. The difficulty is how to determine the QDF in an unknown wave field. In this study, approximate expression of QDFs with undetermined coefficient are provided. 
This page shows how to build the approximate expression of the here, a new coordinate in the surface boundary of the cylinder is used. In this coordinate, the dynamic and the kinematic free surface boundary conditions are shown in these two equations. Then, using Taylor series expansion, we can obtain these two equations and uh, the assumptions use, uh, used uh, including these equations. It should be mentioned that the accurate expression of QDFs are unachievable. This is because the information of the outer follow is unknown. But we can still find some useful term to build the approximate expression of the QDFs. Here is the, the expression we built. It. The coefficient in the red circle are the undetermined coefficients. They can be determined by using the historical data of monitored wave elevations. The next section, experimental validation and the results. To validate the proposed measure, we have conducted an experiment on a circular cylinder. Detailed setup are listed here. Uh, the cylinder is a circular cylinder with a radius of 0.6 meter and the 12 wheel gauge are uniformly displayed around the cylinder and uh, water depth is 0.8 meter and uh, we have we we use the force balance to monitor the wave force and the bending moment when we use the FST algorithm to obtain the frequency component of the monitored wave elevation. It is necessary to eliminate the discontinuity of the start and end point of the data of the selected selected data fragments. To test the expression of QTF we have select several fragments to test the, this uh, exp expressions. In this figure the horizontal coordinate is obtained from the measured data and the vertical coordinate is obtained from the calculated results with the QTFs. From the comparison, it's evident that the QTF provides the acceptable prediction of nonlinear waves. This page shows the reconstructed wave force and the real-time reconstructed wave force. We can also call them as offline reconstructed wave force and online reconstructed wave force. Both the linear measure and the nonlinear measure are utilized. The comparison between them evidence that the nonlinear measure can significant can significantly improve the reconstructed wave force in both offline and online reconstructions. This page shows the application of a recursive list square algorithm in the waveform reconstruction. The algorithm is shown here and uh, the reconstructed results are shown here. The first one is uh, linear waveform reconstruction and uh, the second and the third one is uh, second order waveform reconstructions. In these two, two figures we can find the low frequency waveform can be accurate accurately reconstructed but the uh, high frequency wave force are still lower than the experimental result. This is because the third and the higher order wave force are not ac not considered in the nonlinear method. Uh, here shows the spectral of the linear and the second order wave force uh, from the comparison, we can find the uh, nonlinear measure are uh, uh, the spectral of the nonlinear wave force are acceptable. Uh, this table shows the uh, time cost for the different measure and the comparison between them. Finally, some note about this measure, this algorithm I list here. First, so, uh, this algorithm will introduce uh, a company frequency disturbance. And uh, the second is when using RLS 
algorithm, the linear and the nonlinear wave force need to be reconstructed separately. Then the third one is uh, the result of obtained by this algorithm relies on the selection of initial boundaries. And uh, this algorithm is only suitable for the real-time reconstruction. The last section, the conclusion. The main conclusion of this study is li are listed here. First, approx approximate expression of a quadratic transfer function can be used for the nonlinear wave force reconstruction in a stochastic wave field. The, the, the second is the reconstruction errors on the crest and the troughs are significantly reduced by the nonlinear method. The third is a nonlinear method with the FFT algorithm provides the most accurate, most accurate reconstructed result. However, it's uh, time consuming. And the fourth is for the data collection of wave forces, the nonlinear method with FFT algorithm is suggested. For the and the last one is for the real time applications. RLS algorithm has more advantage than the FFT algorithm in terms of efficiency. Detail can be found in the reference. Thank you for watching this presentation.